When studying language spread, linguistic geographers also consider the context in which language is used. For example, in a given place, one language may be used at home, another in school, and still another in business. Being aware of the different uses of languages and the spaces or settings in which they are spoken helps us understand how languages become dominant. In this lecture, we will examine language dominance, dynamics, and combined languages. This is important to geographers to understand the importance of language in globalization. Linguistic dominance does not automatically equal the largest amount of speakers in a language, but economic and political power does, as is the case with English. Even though there are more Chinese-speaking people than English-speaking, English is still the dominant language, mainly because it is spread throughout the world. Chinese, on the other hand, is more concentrated in a smaller area. A language gap refers to the fact that there are about 6,900 different languages but only about 200 countries in the world. Therefore, language is not necessarily strictly associated with any functions of a state. There may be many languages spoken in just one country, yet none of them or just one of them may be its official language. Many of these stateless languages are not taught in school but may be spoken at home and as part of a person's identity. An official language is one that a state formally designates for use in its political, legal, and administrative affairs. Although the United States does not have an official language, some states, as shown in the map, have passed laws making English the official language of the state. Languages change over time and from one place to another. Often these changes utilize loan words which are words that originate in one language and are incorporated into the vocabulary of another language. The chart on the left shows a list of popular loanwords that and where they originated. The photo on the top is an example of borrowed word karaoke, and the bottom photo shows the diffusion of ethnic foods such as fajitas. These both are prime examples of linguistic borrowing. When people who speak different languages come into contact and need to communicate, they might create a pidgin language. This process of creating a common language by people who do not share one is known as pidginization. Pidgin languages typically have specialized and limited functions because they develop in response to particular circumstances. Pidgin languages are usually not a first language a person learns. However, a Creole language which develops from a pidgin language is usually taught as the first language. Creolization describes the process of linguistic change in which the functions and the use of a pidgin language expand. The photo depicts a Creole language in Papua New Guinea. The sign reads, work on road, all cars must stop when you see the red sign. The name Papua New Guinea's Creole language is talk pisin, literally talk pidgin, a reflection of the language pidgin origins. Some words are Polynesian in origin, others derive from the languages indigenous to Papua New Guinea, and still others reflect German and English influences, a result of colonization. Talk pisin is now used for some governmental functions and in journalism. A lingua franca is another language that is used to communicate between two people who speak different languages. Specifically, a lingua franca is used to facilitate trade or business. There are a few lingua francas used today, but many believe that English has become a global lingua franca. English is already used in communication at sea and air and in the areas of science, medicine, technology, and international business by everyone. No other language has the international standing or the global reach of English. Although this diagram shows the influence of American and British English on the global spread of the language, there is not a single version of English. Rather, a, the varieties of English that exist are highly localized. So, for example, Nigerian English differs from Pakistani English. Please pause the video and answer the following. Compare and contrast Pidgin, Creole, and Lingua Franca languages. In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer.